Alright you guys, so right now, um, I'm going to saturate my client's hair with water, um, making it manageable pretty much. Now, I'm not going to drench my client's hair, just going to make sure that it's nice and damped. That way, I can manipulate the hair in the direction that I want it to go in. Now, it's so important to, you know, be neat when you're cutting hair and set the hair in the direction that you want it to go in because most of the time when you start off um, sloppy, the end result is going to be sloppy. So make sure you start off real neat, get that hair in the direction that you want it to go in first before cutting. So now that I have the hair nice and saturated, um, I'm gonna comb it back, make sure that everything um, touches the root and uh, make sure everything goes in the direction, like I said, that I want it to go in. By using my comb, manipulating the hair, um, it makes it a lot easier and manageable. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna part the hair. Um, at the parietal ridge, I'm gonna set a part, and that's, the parietal ridge is basically the edge of the hair um, between the top and the sides, right? It's the area that I'm working in right now. That's called the parietal ridge. So I'm just gonna set in my duck clips, um, make sure that the hair is combed down, and uh, I'm gonna do that around the entire head. One other thing that you want to make sure that you do is comb the hair down as you go, all right? You need that hair to lay down as much as possible. If you need to grow and grab your spray bottle and damp it a little bit more, do it because it, it really makes a big difference. You need that hair to lay down.
So next thing you wanna do is debulk the sides. I'm using my Andis Cordless Masters with a two guard with the lever closed and I'm debulking the sides. Now, the reason why I'm debulking the sides is because I really wanna make sure that my guidelines are visible. That's extremely important. You don't wanna put the ball line on a chunk of hair like this and just, you know, you know, it does kill time, but starting out, uh, make sure that it's just neat and 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 controllable all right that's that's what we're doing right now we're making sure that it's at a length where everything is controllable where you can set your guidelines in and everything is visible Now, when it comes to the back, I never go all the way up, all right? I always drop it in the back, um, depending on where my client's um, occipital bone is, right? So I come off of the occipital bone and that way it won't look like a high fade, you know what I'm saying? So make sure you kind of, you know, uh, shape it off of that bone in the back. Next thing I wanna do is build shape. So right now, I'm clipper over combing. I'm setting my comb uh, kinda at a 45 degree angle. I would say 90 degree angle. And then just taking off all of the excess hair that's sticking out. Now, in some areas, I like to go straight up to blend the bottom half to the top. So don't be afraid to go up and down instead of just always relying on that side to side motion. Um, like I said, at the occipital bone, you see me, um, you know, uh, angling my comb more so than you do see me on the side because I'm basically making sure that the hair comes off of that bone in the back. So when you're first starting out doing clipper over comb, you want to make sure you stay, you, you take your time as much as possible. All right, don't be so influenced by everybody that you see, you know, clipper over combing fast because there's a there's a good chance that you could mess up clipper over combing. You you could accidentally, you know, go behind the clipper rather than go in front of the clipper. And I've done that. Uh, I want to I say one time I've done that. So make sure you you don't go by what you see everybody else doing it so fast you know what i mean just take your time so usually i set in my ball line with my trimmers but i want to show you guys that you could do it which are uh you know clippers as well Right now, I got my Oster's Cordless Fast Fees. These are custom clippers. They are not out yet. Um, but I got my lever closed, and I'm setting my guideline in just how I would um, if I had my trimmers. So I'm going to drop it in the back, go around the occipital bone, and come back up in that same direction that I have on that left side. So 
So what you don't want to do is bring that line all the way around. Chances are it's not going to be straight. So I'm going to start right here in the front and then kind of meet it in the back. That way I get a better, um, that way I get a better like curvature on that, that line that I'm trying to create. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trimmers and just take off the rest of the bulk that's on the bottom half. Now going back with my fast feeds with the lever fully open, I'm going up about a half inch, making sure that I keep it consistent all the way around. Now, a lot of times where I'm helping, um, you know, beginners cut hair, I find that you guys are not committing to the guideline on how wide it should be. Some of you guys are like, uh, I wanna say doing your own thing, when you really need to follow the steps like the steps are here laid out for you guys and you got to commit to it that's the only way your, your blends is going to come out looking like mine you got to stretch the blend or anybody else's i don't want to just say i don't want to just make it seem like it's all about me anybody's that you look at all right they're stretching their blends making that their guidelines wide all right sometimes you guys set your guidelines a little small and wonder why your your blends are kind of short you know what i mean stretch those guidelines out that way you can see a greater transition I want you guys to look at how I'm going over the guideline multiple times. Like even when I go around, I'm not going to stop here. I'm going to keep going over the guideline even when I go back around.
So same thing with the one guard open. Um, I'm going up about a half inch and I'm gonna go over that guideline multiple times to make sure it's at that length. Where you get your feet? Now, normally I don't use a two, um, but I went ahead anyway and just um, put on the two guard with the lever closed, and now I'm just going straight up. So just because you clippered over a comb the first time doesn't mean that you don't come back and do it again. Doing it the first time was just to get yourself visually um, there before you actually just dive right in. So right now I'm doing cleanup work. I'm setting my comb at a 90 degree angle and I'm just taking off all of that XX hair that's sticking out. If you think about it, all you're doing, uh, if you love co cutting coarse hair um, or African American hair, all this is is doing a high top. All right, you're you're it's different texture, but if you look at it like you're doing a high top, it'll be um, easier for you to understand what you're doing. So working back down on the fade, um, I'm putting back on my one guard and just making sure that area between the one and the two runs smoothly into each other.
Now closing the lever on that one guard, um, I'm softening up that middle line. Um, that way it's easier to take it out with the next step. And this is just babying it at the at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? It's it's kind of like I could I could use uh, the other guard and take it out, but as a beginner, if you just soften everything up before you actually take it out, you know what I'm saying? It's it's gonna be a lot easier for you to you know uh, blend things into each other. Just soften things up before you actually take it fully out. Where you get your feet? Now with the zero guard closed in a flick out motion, flick out that middle line. Remember to start below the line, flick to the line, and use your corners um, majority of the time, right? So. Um, right now I'm using my corners, um, taking out those areas, and I want to say this is the longest process, right? The flick out motion, taking out these lines, these guidelines, it's, it's the longest process. So just take your time and, uh, you know, it'll come out right. Don't rush, just be patient. Remember the flick out motion is not the same motion that you do when you set in guidelines, all right? It's a different type of, of motion. It's more of a one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. It's, it's, it's a different type of motion. Like when you're drawn on, like say you have a piece of paper and you're, you know, got a pencil and you rub that pencil super fast across that paper. That's basically what you're doing when you're taking out these guidelines.
Now with the lever closed in a flick out motion, flick out that bottom line. Um, keep in mind that I'm using my corners. Um, I'm brushing as I go and I'm using um, that one, two, three technique, right? I'm not um, setting in a guideline by just digging in. That's not what you wanna do. Um, it's the same thing when you set your, your zero guard closed and you're flicking out, it's the same motion. Where you get your feet? So to create another transition at the bottom and just to clean it up, um, I like to use my Endis foil shavers and just make it razor bald at the bottom. All right, this makes your fade look a lot cleaner and it adds another transition to your blend. So lastly, as far as blending, what you wanna do is do detail work, all right? This is what separates you from just being average, right? You just, um, I like to look away from the blend. I like to look in the mirror. I like to use other perspectives um, to basically see differently. So there's areas in your blend that you see a, a little bit more bulk than usual. What you wanna do is set your, your your clipper uh, to the side and kind of just, you know, kind of just use it as a thinning shear and go between those bulk areas to get them out.
also um when it comes to uh you know blending you guys want to memorize your guidelines i can't stress that enough that is most important you shouldn't be guessing what guard to pick up next make sure you guys train your eye to know what guard uh goes in what area So right now I'm going to take out my duck clips, saturate my client's hair uh, back with water. That way I could do my shear work. So now that I got my hair nice and saturated, I'm gonna start by parting the hair, making a strip down the middle, and use that area down the middle as your, your guideline, all right? So I'm gonna take off about an inch in the middle, and whatever I take off in the middle, I'm gonna line it up with the hair that I have on the sides and match it up to everything in the middle. Where you get your feet?
So now I'm going to blow dry using my styling comb and just blow dry in the direction that I want the hair to fall in. Where you get your feet? So now I'm going to add some styling powder to my client's hair. Um, I like using this um, on kind of longer hair because it doesn't leave the hair uh, wet looking. It has this natural uh, kind of dry looking um, to it and it actually adds a lot of hold to the hair too. So um, I add a little bit to the roots and on top and, um, and I just style it with my hands after that giving it that kind of messy look.
Listen, let me tell you why they call me 360. When they sit in my chair, I spin them in the full 360, and they come out looking like... Damn, son. We make it look easy. YouTube, this is The Cut. And if you like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Also, Hustle Dreams Production, that's my brother. He does all my beats. His YouTube channel will be linked in the description below. Also, if you want to know where you can find any tools that you've seen in this video, links will be in the description below. Otherwise, you guys can follow me on Instagram and TikTok. My TikTok is official 360GZ and my Instagram is 360GZ. But it's your boy 360GZ and I'm out of here. Chip.